Welcome back fellow animators and friends. This is another tutorial of this tutorial series. This is episode 2 and uh, my name is Adrian and uh, I'm part of the Tag Animations and today we are going to get straight into emitters, cloners, and render instances. Now if you haven't seen the last tutorial, I, I suggest that you probably go see it because it deals with um, just the basic concepts if you already know then you're fine but um, it deals with render settings content browser and materials um, down here and stuff so if you want to go check that out and then watch this that's completely okay and you can watch things out of order it won't really make a difference um, and so yeah this is a lot more a lot more fun um, as I would say, because last time we were just talking about settings, and now we get to actually do things. Um, again, this goes pertains to a lot of Minecraft animators, so I'm going to have a lot of references to things you can do for Minecraft animations and such. But it's not limited just to Minecraft. These are just basic concept, concepts that I've learned over time that uh, can help you. So, let's get into this. So... In this scene, we can see that I have a plane. I just went up here, clicked on plane, and set that down. We have cube, and we have all these other things that deal with emitters and stuff, which we'll get into for a sec in a second. So let's let's look at what what the emitter has to offer. <clears throat> Basically, what an emitter is is it does what it says. It emits particles. So if we just press play right now, you can see this cube's doing some weird stuff because I have it on but we'll get to that in a second so the emitter just shoots out particles and stuff we do show objects that's when you actually put something as a child under under the emitter so we're gonna put this cube under here and then you'll be able to see so now we have just random cubes dropping on the ground <clears throat> so while that's playing I'm gonna go over some of the stuff uh, that the emitter has to offer birth rate editor basically what you see in the editor so if I want to make that five it's only going to show us a less display of like five or whatever you can also go to display or options level of detail and just set it to low and it won't show that as much you put it to 10 it still won't show that much and if you put it back to high then it'll show you the actual count so yeah so that's what you see in the editor and this is what you see in the render I could put this to a hundred put this and then do the render and you'll see that you should oh hold up there's no light sorry yeah. and that happens sometimes cinema 4d will crash and it usually happens for me so bear with it um bear with me when when that happens because I do need a new uh, video card so Okay, so back to what I was saying. Uh, let me show objects. There we go. And so if we add a light, and uh, let's say we move this light right where we can, yeah, where we can see stuff. Oh, what happened there? Oh, switch screens. So we move the light. Let's save and we change this back to 100. Now notice how there's very few in this, and we'll pause it right there, there's very few here, but when we render it, you'll notice that there's a lot more than just a couple. And that's because it's a, it's a way to save like memory and time and cause less lag in your scene. So um, this is a really good feature, and Cinema 4D crash. It's a really good feature, so that way, if you're trying to do stuff in the editor, but you may have like a really bad video card or something, it allows you to kind of get that same result without all the hassle of you know waiting for everything to update and stuff. So that's really cool. That's really helpful, especially for when you get later into more complex scenes and stuff. <clears throat> Visibility, I don't really mess with it. I don't exactly know what it does. Um, I can only kind of guess that it 
does something, but I've never really seen anything, any change with it. Um, if we look at the, the actual manual stuff, it says um, how many may, how many are visible. I, I don't really know over time. So don't worry about visibility. It doesn't really do anything. Most times you just keep it at 100%. Um, so I'm going to skip that. Um, start a mission, basically when it when you want the mission to start. And again, sorry for all this um, crashing and stuff. It's really annoying, but somehow I make it through. So, um, so we will go down to here, change this to like 50, and notice how it doesn't start uh, until 50. So it doesn't start until you want it to. And then same with stop the mission. Basically, if you want it to stop at 60, so it does emit for 50 up to 60 and then stops, then that's how you do it. So that's what those two do. Um, C just gives it random. So if we up it here, we do a seed and you can see that, oh, well, maybe you can't see here, but basically it'll, it'll randomize this. Lifetime, basically how long do you want these particles to last? So I'm gonna let it play for a second, put it zero and 90. All right, I'm gonna let this play for a second and you can see that if I put it to like 30, which is lower than 90, then you can see they start disappearing one by one um, after 30 frames or so. So, And doing variation, which I like to do because it brings a random effect, is um, variation just adds more randomness to, to what's going on. So it will change its lifetime to like 29, 28, 27, stuff like that, um, as far as I know. Speed, same thing with variation on that side. Um, speed, just how fast they, they come out. So 500, they're going to come out really fast. And you change the variation, and some are going to come out fast, some are going to come out slow, stuff like that. Um, end scale, basically, do you want them to scale down? So that's scaling all the way down to like zero. They just like kind of fall um, into like nothing. And then you scale them to like two or something then they start getting bigger as they drop to the ground so it's a really cool effect and then variation is always there so they get big sizes and stuff uh tangible i think that they just i forget what tangible does but i think it, it just drops them a certain way like their rotation and stuff um i don't really use it that much i don't usually use it that much so i don't really notice what what's going on but usually it's off because you have your rotation here so if you want everything to kind of come in a certain way you have more flexibility with it like that than it being tangible so um, render instances we'll talk in a bit about so basically that's your emitter um, this is basically the sizing of it right so we're gonna let it play again actually we're gonna change this to like 20 um, trying to make this a little bit better easier to see zero and who we actually won't put that to zero like that we're gonna change this to like a hundred so that way we can see what's going on and uh, angle hori uh, horizontal basically it makes them like spread apart so coming away from the meter best way is to, to look here as how it's going so you can see there's a lot more um, differences in in like where they're actually coming out so basically what the emission is doing is basically how how this is um, let's see if I can show you see how it's coming all over the place instead of just going straight down that's that's kind of what what this whole area does and you can do cone two to kind of get different effects and stuff um, put that to 360 and it kind of goes right out and stuff. I don't know. I don't really mess with this much, but um, there's some really cool things that you can do with just this right here. Um, and include, exclude modifiers. So basically, this is this is the basic stuff. On, you know, a lot of people know about emitters and stuff like that. But um, especially with like new Minecraft animators and stuff, this is probably as far as far as they'll get 
or as far as you'll get and you know you'll think it's great and stuff but there's a lot more that you can do with with emitters than than meets the eye for example we have uh, some modifiers here or um, under particles yeah modifiers that you can add to the emitter to affect the the particles and I'm gonna show you how to so let me add some turbulence. I'm going to just put it down right here so that way you can see it better. Open up the emitter, put in turbulence, put in occlude, and you don't see anything at first, and you probably won't unless I bring this up. So right now you can see, and uh, I'm actually going to take the simulation tag off here so you can see what's going on. So if I turned off turbulence, you can just see that they're going straight down. But if I turn on turbulence, you can see something really weird is happening. You can see they're kind of like flowing. And if I turn up the scale, you'll see they're really just kind of flowing really weird. If I turn up this, and I usually turn this to aerodynamics, you can really see that kind of looks like there's wind. Like it's simulating wind even though there is, isn't is wind. And there's also a wind, um, where is it? There's also a wind modifier, but I won't really get into that much since it it's really self-explanatory. You put the modifier where you want the wind to go, and the particles will react. So in that direction, though, it like a fan. So um, it's not really much, but these three um, are very very useful and very um, helpful when you're trying to do things. So especially for like Minecraft animators and stuff, when you're trying to animate a torch, you might just have the emitter going straight up but I mean there's a lot more you can do with that you can add turbulence give it a really unique look um, you can add a tractor so that way it's going in a certain direction or towards a certain thing and you can add gravity and stuff so I'm gonna show you this after that so I'm gonna leave turbulence on I'm going to uh, add a tractor to this so basically any kind of modifier that you want to add you basically put it in here so notice that this thing called the attractor very self-explanatory so I'm gonna put this here and you kind of already see that some of them are flowing this way but notice that the strength is all the way up and that's why that that um, that it's not you know affecting these particles as much so we do it to 100 you see, uh, yeah, a few of them are. We do it to a thousand, and we can see that something really cool happens. And it's not until you really increase. Um, <clears throat> so if I scale down these um, these cubes, and I added more to the editor, like 200, now it looks really cool because we're getting a different effect than we than we used to. I'm gonna put this back to pyramid and change these all back to their their normal and you can see that's really cool too um, this, this whole size thing put that to 100 100 0 0 so now they're just coming from here they're just flowing down and I'm actually gonna make this a little bit smaller so that way you can actually see that it's coming from here so now you have this really cool effect where it almost looks like magic or something is coming on because they're disappearing so you don't really see all of it um, and you can also make this like 0.2 so that way it looks like they're disappearing um, so so besides the point um, you can basically move this attractor around and um, get a really unique effect and it's interactive so you can move it while it's playing and you'll get you know what you expect so yeah so I'm gonna keep this as it is so basically you have all the stuff going here and that's really cool it looks like magic cool right but what else you can do what you can do is uh, add some gravity some real like gravity stuff and you can see that once we apply it, it already kinda looks really realistic in the fact that there's some kind of gravity so you don't have to put like simulation tags on this free flowing um, dust or whatever you want to call it in order to get that same effect you can just add a gravity modifier and still get an effect that's really unique to 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 look like um, 
something's tugging on the force of uh, these particles. So we add gravity and really even if you move it somewhere it's not going to affect anything because it's still going to go down. Um, but yeah, and if we put this attractor, let's see, how do we want to do this? Put this attractor here and you can see we get a really cool effect here. You can see that s most of it is drawn down by the gravity and then the other stuff is drawn into the, the tractor. So I think that's that's really crazy awesome. So, yep. So there's a lot of things you can do with these different modifiers. Um, it just depends and while I'm at it I might as well just show the wind. Um, basically you add wind right here so that way it's going wherever the blue is is where is the direction that uh, whatever modifier like the emitter goes towards whatever the blue handle is at so it's supposed to be going down right now and uh, same with any of the modifiers so that's going that way and so if we turn this up and crank the wind up you should be able to see um, probably gonna have to turn it way up and turn it to 100 oops yeah we'll turn it to 100 oh maybe the the tractor's too strong anyways if there wasn't any gravity or tractor I'm pretty sure that the yeah so basically you can kind of see uh, you can kind of see what's going on with the thing probably got to tweak this a lot in order to get it to work right but yeah you kind of see that it's it's making some of these particles um, flow up and stuff just for being here and stuff so those are modifiers those deal with the emitter and there's a lot of cool functions that that they have um, and you don't have to just have a, a emitter just straight pointing down and that's it there's a lot more things you can do with the emitter than the meat sign. You don't need a plug-in or anything to to get a better emitter. Really, I think I think for for me, there's you know there's so much that the emitter can do right now that uh, for me at the moment, um, I haven't had to to look for another plug-in or or something for emitter and stuff. So emitter is is super cool and it's going to be really helpful in the future when you use it for a lot of other things. And even things that I'm going to say in uh, future tutorials are going to deal with the emitter because it's that powerful of a of a object in Cinema 4D. So basically that's the, the quick overview on the emitter. And now it's time to get to something, uh, again, a lot, not a lot of uh, beginning animators and stuff use a lot of this stuff that is here because it's, it's foreign. Um, I know that I didn't use a lot of this stuff when... Um, when when I just started, I remember just using the Motex thing out of out of the MoGraph objects, and that's really it. I've never used Fracture or Mo Instance or any of these um, before. You know, I really started to learn about Cinema 4D. So hopefully, I'm teaching you guys a little bit stuff. You know, um, to get you guys a little kickstart before you know you end up spending like a year or so just trying to learn Cinema 4D and everything it has to offer so hopefully you guys take this with uh, a lot of uh, you know education value educational value yes um, so cloner uh, cloner and cube I'm gonna put that in and you can all see already something's happened we see three little cubes I'm gonna make these cubes a little bit larger so you can see a little bit better there we go and you can already see there's three cubes um, Probably okay. Put that on high. Turn off Team Viewer so no one connects to me. Yes, that would probably be sufficient. Okay, <laughs> so uh, we can see that the count is three and there's three cubes. Pretty self-explanatory. You increase it, it's gonna get you know really crazy. So basically, what the cloner does is basically clone your objects, but uh, it clones it in such a way where it's not really laggy. Um, and I'm gonna get more into that in a second. I just want to explain some of the some of the things here So basically when you open up when you have the cloner out you have three things object linear radial and grid array um, grid array 
I'm not going to go over object until later on in later on tutorials since it is a little bit there's there's a learning curve to the object function but I will go into linear radial and grid uh grid array because um these are probably the easiest functions to use and probably the most used um as far as I know so um so linear basically what linear linear does is do um makes a straight line of your clones your objects so if we wanted to put um, a Taurus here and probably want to scale it down but that's okay um, so a Taurus and yeah we do want to scale it down or yeah hold up I think I messed up on that okay we're not gonna do we're not gonna do a Taurus we're gonna do a small sphere because why not so um, the cool thing about cloners is um, just like emitters if you put um, multiple different objects in an emitter it's going to randomize what it spits out um, and basically so if you put like a, a pyramid and a cube in an emitter it's going to spit out different variations of cubes and pyramids same thing here in the cloner if you put two different objects it's gonna kinda vary how they are in this um, in this setup so you can see that it kinda distributes um, what is a pyramid what is a um, a cube and so forth which is really cool because it, it helps give you randomization between objects and stuff within your cloner that's not the point though the point is that we gotta go over the count and stuff which is self-explanatory the offset is basically where at in this like line where at in this line uh, linear path do you want it to start so kinda self-explanatory for that too uh, Y increase basically like the scaling of of your objects and stuff in between for this line so it's like scaling them down scaling them up um, Z is basically is yeah same thing kinda like your positional things and that and then you have your rotation stuff this is rotating all the objects on the same thing um, if you want individualized stuff that's where you have to use other modifiers which I'll show you in a second so just your rotations and stuff so that's basically linear um, just straight lines and stuff then we get it into radial which I'm gonna have to bring this cloner up so you can see there we go. So radial is basically, as you would think, a circle or a circular uh, path in which all these objects kind of um, align to. And it's pretty cool because if you have, like, if you want a scene where, let's say you had mountains and you put them in a cloner, you can have all these mountains in a circle up the radius because they're huge objects, and then you'd have a scene. Um, you wouldn't have to make clones or copies and copies of uh, the same mountain in order to get the same result the thing with the cloner is that it's really simple to get like these really complex um, objects or different um, ways to, to maneuver objects in a really simple one you know click um, object so yeah and you can decide what plane you want to have it on so if you want it on XY XC ZY um, basically just front facing and stuff you can do that you can add more clones and uh, really max it out or whatever and it won't really do anything um, start angle basically where do you want it to start kind of kind of like linear where it was it had its own um, its own start angle kind of stuff offset basically just it turns them all you can when you have less clones then it's just basically um, rotation of them offset variation basically kind of randomizes it but not as good as as the modifiers do so it kind of randomizes the positions between your objects um, offset variation and offset seed does kind of just seeds everything so it makes it a lot more random so I'm not gonna go over transform I will go over effectors in a second after grid array and so this is grid array basically as you would think I'm gonna take these two out so that it's easier to see grid array basically just puts things in a grid like a, a cube but you know floating 
<laughs> um, so basically, Grid Array is probably one of the most used things, just because of how fun it is. Um, basically, just everything's in grids, and you can really make really cool and very unique um, different designs and stuff um, using Grid Array. Um, it's really, really cool, really awesome, and I'm lagging right now, but um, I'll show you a way to, to fix that. So that's Grid Array. Um, basically, any objects that you have, it just has them in this cube or whatever, and you can scale it up, you can scale it sideways and everything like that. So it's really awesome and really cool. You can do spheres, you can do cylinders. So it's very flexible um, depending on what you have and stuff. So those are the th three um, different variations of what you can do in the cloner. I'm going to turn these to like something small so that way I can go over some the vectors and actually you can't see those. So there we go. Okay. So we have our, our little thing right here. I'm about to show how to use these effectors or the cool effectors to use with, with uh, this. So I'm going to use Grid Array, but this works with any of them. I just like using Grid Array just because it's very, um, I don't know, it, sh it has a lot more objects to deal with than any of the other ones. I also like Radial, um, but Grid Array seems to be one of my favorites, so I'm just going to use that. So under MoGraph and under Effector, really the only ones you're going to use, and I will go over a few more of these over time in the in the advanced tutorial series if I ever get to that, but um, really the only one you are going to probably use um, if you really use the cloner at, at all, or if you're trying to do just stuff with like character animation and stuff, you're really just going to have to use random. Uh, randomizer, whatever you want to call it, the random um, modifier. There you go. And uh, notice that when you add a modifier, it automatically connects to a cloner. So if we look under effectors, it already has it. So um, if you want to use multiple random, so if you have mo multiple cloners and stuff, it, you will have to add them in to the effectors thing because really none of these cloners, after you have the first one, you have to, to figure out. Um, it has to figure out which one's the actual real one. So right now, even though there's a random effector right here, this second cloner is not going to pick it up unless you tell it to um, because of that. But if you add it in another random, it should go to it. So like that. And there we go. See? So about random. Random is really cool. It's a random uh, modifier, which is really cool. Um, and it allows you to like change the structure of the whole thing that you have. So this used to be a grid, grid shape, and then now it's just like this mess, this this jambalaya of of cubes. And uh, here you can you can change various objects for each individual um, each individual cube. Um, so right here we are just like changing the the spacing between these but you can also change like the size and so some of these will be different sizes um like that you can uniform them so that they're all like the same um like they're still cubes um and that one, if, if you do it like this way, they're not going to be cubes exactly anymore. But this will, uniform scale will make sure that they're still, they still retain their shape, I guess. Yes. So, yes. I don't know what absolute scale does exactly. Pretty, it, it might just, like, yeah, I don't, I have no clue what absolute scale does. Thinking that it just thickens them, but I'm not completely sure, so I'm not going to go over that. Um, you don't really need to worry about these two, um, but yeah, and rotation is another one where you can really just have a lot of fun um, changing all these parameters in this, and you don't have to make copies, which is probably the best thing about the cloner. With the cloner, you don't have to make copies, and most of these, most times when you make copies, you have a really jumbled space, you can't do anything, it's really hard, so... I would say with Minecraft animators, 
the most use this will have for you would be if you're trying to build things with blocks and stuff so for those minecraft people since this is going to be towards minecraft animators um say i had well, what's a good one um bedrock okay uh that's not showing uh let's say i had what do i want what do i want to have okay i'm trying to look for for a really good okay so say we had a lot of oh that's not showing either what is going on what is going on with this uh b y k there we go so hopefully hopefully this works. okay cool so say we had a beacon right all you minecraft people know what a beacon is out there or hopefully you should so basically i put a beacon under the cloner turn the cube off let's scale this beacon down just a bit so that way it's not so cluttered you can see that in this screen it's is pretty cluttered um and try just we're gonna try really hard to scale these down um the best we can without lag um turning on this Okay, we're gonna we're gonna turn this. Probably a beacon wasn't the best idea, but okay. So as as you can see here, we have all these really cool beacons, I guess, um, just here. And uh, if we go back to the random thing, we do seeds and stuff, and that makes it you know different. Um, but yeah, you can you can individualize a lot of these. Um, probably not as much as you want to. But I mean, you can get it so close to to pretty much the way you want, um, rather than because most times you don't want to. If you use a cloner, you you shouldn't want to um, just affect one object. Because if you want to just affect like this one right here, you probably shouldn't use the cloner. The cloner is supposed to. It, the main use for the cloner is supposed to make everything look like you have more than what you have. So. If I want it, let's it, since this looks like an explosion, we'll say that there's an explosion happening. Instead of having, you know, all these random, uh, you know, all these things going at the same time, and not really, because in an explosion, things happen at different speeds, different paces, um, different times, and stuff, and different things happen. And uh, with the cloner, you have the ability to really make it seem like everything is is on its own and it's only supposed to be an illusion if you want to get the actual thing you're gonna have to um, use just individual objects but the best practice is to use a cloner and then with certain objects make those um, have those be just their individual selves so you're using the cloner as a way to mask um, or, or make it seem like you have a lot going on even though there's only maybe a few objects that you're individually um, using. So what I mean is if I wanted this one to like smack um, a character or something then I would make it so that way I in the same position I'd make another beacon so I'm gonna do this really quick um, I'd make another beacon put it in the same spot as this one and then change the seed or whatever so that way this one's individualized I can animate this right this one right here to smack the character and still have this whole thing going rather than trying to figure out how to make just one of these inside of the cloner animate sorry excuse me animate um, itself and you know etc so that's the cloner in depth um, hopefully that wasn't too much to handle if you have any questions just let me know in the comments and uh, last but not least we'll get to render instances best way to show what render instances is is to go back to the previous example with the cube so I'm gonna back through all this there we go so if we go back to the the cube idea where we have all these cubes but we're gonna make it like two or three or, or just a couple um, set all these really close together okay and we're gonna turn off the randomizer because we don't need it right now okay so 
what render instances does is basically um, best way to explain this is it will allow you to it, it basically takes away the the integrity of an object um, so if I put a simulation tag on on this cube so we're gonna do that rigid body and this floor already has a collider tag so basically all these are just gonna you know fall down and happen that's another useful thing with the cloner you can put a tag on one and they all do their own thing and stuff um, so yeah we're gonna do this and uh, say we want even more cubes we want you know why not like a lot you know yeah yeah we need a lot because we are cube fanatics so notice how um, right now I am probably going about 15 15 um, frames when it drops down right if we were to put this off of render instances uh, it goes down to about 10 frames probably I don't, I don't know if that was because I just did it when when it started but yeah probably about about 10 frames or so um, but render, rinse, render instances sorry is a little bit faster with this but also I'm pretty sure that it doesn't exactly okay it does yeah okay so basically <laughs> okay how does how does this go um so yeah, basically you can render a, a a huge amount of objects without the the same amount of lag that you would get um, if you were to do it regularly. And uh, this can only be okay. I remember this can only be with like static objects. So things that aren't really so if you're doing characters, not all the time can you can you use ren render instances. It just depends. But uh, yeah, the best example I can do is just this. Um, but there, there are certain things, uh, certain examples um, I can show where. Oh, actually, I do have an example. Hopefully, um, I can show it. Um, so we will go on to YouTube. We will type in um, creeper attack tag animations. Okay, and uh, I did I did render instances here, so I'm gonna show you really quick. Turn it down, and we're gonna skip forward. So basically, the concept of this was basically you load a simulation or whatever for this one dude, and uh, and these creepers come out of nowhere and stuff. The thing is, all these creepers are done with render instances, all of them. And uh, it, it helps up with lag, and also you can get a lot of this, um, a lot of this, a lot of these, you know, uh, you can't have this, it, it would be hard to have this many, um, this many clones at one time moving and animated and stuff without the use of like render instances or something. Um, so yeah. And then I use render instances for this because this was huge. I used probably about 5,000 clones or 5,000, yeah, clones in each one of these, uh, the or not clones, 5,000 uh, emissions of, of creepers in each one. So that's probably about 2,000 creepers um, in the course of maybe a minute or so just, you know, coming out. Um... So it, it's really cool to have all this and that's kind of just like a short example of what renderances can do. Um, but yeah, go ahead and play around with renderances and uh, cloners and emitters and hopefully you can find some use with them. And uh, yeah, so that's the end of this tutorial. If you guys had uh, epiphany or you guys learned something today, please let me know in the comments. It really helps to, to know that you guys are are experiencing really awesome cool fun ex you know educational moments uh with my tutorials <laughs>